Number one says um, for the polynomial function f of x, we have um, that f of 0 equals 6, f of 2 equals negative 4, f of negative 2 equals 0, f of 3 equals 0, f of negative 1 equals 8, f of 1 equals 0. And they want us to rewrite f of x as a product of linear factors. So a few things we should look at here is um, the degree of f of x. So the degree of f of x is 3. So this means that there will also be three linear factors. And um, remember that linear factors come from zeros, so numbers that um, f of x equals zero at. So if we can find where f of x equals zero, then we'll have some of the linear factors. And we see that they gave us some of these. Okay, so we have f of negative two equals zero, we have f of 3 equals 0, and we have f of 1 equals 0. So this means that um, x equals negative 2, x equals 3, and x equals 1 are all zeros. So now we just have to put them back to factors. So we're just going to add 2 over to both sides. So we get x plus 2 equals 0. We're going to subtract 3. So we get x minus 3 equals 0, and we're going to subtract 1, so we get x minus 1 equals 0. So here's our factors um, for f of x. So if we just write this out, we get f of x equals x plus 2 times x minus 3 times x minus 1, and that would be our product of linear factors. Number two, select all polynomials that have x minus 4 as a factor. So now if x minus 4 is a factor, that means x equals 4 is a 0. So if we plug, and I'll just call these f, but if I just plug in 4, it's going to equal out to 0. So we're just going to go ahead and plug 4 into each of these. So we'll get 4 cubed minus 13 times 4 minus 12 and so then we get 64 minus 52 minus 12 and that does equal zero so this one um, has x minus 4 as a factor next one we'll do 4 cubes 4 cubed plus 8 times um, 4 squared which let me just multiply that out for us so that's going to be 8 times 16, 4 squared is 16, and then plus 19 um, times 4, and then plus 12. So this is going to give us 64, and really all of these are adding, so this is not going to give us 0. This is just going to keep giving us like really like big numbers. It's just going to keep getting higher and higher. So this is definitely not going to equal 0, so I'm not even going to add those together. Um, C is going to be um, 4 cubed, which is 64, plus 6 times 4, which is 24, plus 5 times 4, which is 20, and then minus 12. So we've only got minus 12 here and all of this added together, so that's definitely not going to equal 0. Um, then in this one, 4 cubed, which is 64 minus 4 squared, so minus 16. Then we have 10 times 4, which is 40, so minus 40, and then minus 8. And if we do all of that, we do get 0 for this one. So this one has x minus 4 as a factor. And then here we'll plug in 4 squared, which is going to be 16, and then minus 4, so that is not 0. So e does not have x minus 4 as a factor. Number three, write a polynomial function p of x with degree three that has p of seven equaling to zero. Okay, so we need to have three factors if it's degree three, and then we need to have x equals seven as one of our zeros. 
So we'll bring that seven back over by subtracting seven from both sides. And we know that we need X minus seven as a factor. Um, so you could just do X minus seven as all three factors if you wanted. So that would be an example of one that would work. Um, or you could do any other factors you want. So you could have X minus seven for sure you have to have, and then anything else you want here. You could have X minus two, X minus eight, or this could be plus and plus. Okay, so these two factors can be anything you want. You just have to have an X minus seven in there and you need to have three total factors. Number four, long division was used here to divide the polynomial P of X by X minus five and to divide it by X plus five. So if we do, what is P of negative five? So remember, okay, that the factor and the zero are opposite, okay? So for this, and let me erase this color. So for this one, if we have X minus five as the factor and we set it equal to zero, then X equals five is what's being plugged in for this one, okay? So X equals five is being plugged in. So P of five is gonna be equal to 90 versus X plus five, equal to zero would be the same as if we plugged in negative five would give us 40. So when we plug in negative five, we get 40. So make sure you see the opposite of what the factor is because this is the zero versus this is dividing in the factor. Number five, which polynomial function has these zeros? So if this is the factor, x equals negative five is the zero, which this is positive five, so that rules out a and b, because these would be negative five zeros. Okay, so this one, if we add five to both sides, we get x equals five as a zero. Here, we would be adding three first, so let me do this one over here. So we would be adding three to both sides first, then we would be dividing by two. So this one gives us a zero of three halves, and that is not what this is. So C is wrong, so it must be D, but let's just make sure. So um, we know this one is five for sure, we've done that. This one, three X minus two equals zero, we would add two to both sides and then divide by three. So we would get two thirds, which is correct. And then here we would get X equals negative seven. So D is in fact our correct answer. Number six, let the polynomial function, or sorry, the polynomial function Q of X has known factors of X plus three and X plus two. So let's rewrite this as a product of linear factors. So we're gonna wanna divide these into Q first, okay? So let's get our box in here and um, let's divide in X plus um, three first. So we'll put the X plus three over here and then we start with um, three X plus, or sorry, three X to the fourth here. So then, X times 3X cubed would give us 3X to the fourth. Then three times 3X cubed is 9X cubed. So then we wanna get our like terms um, with the X cubes. So 9X cubed and what will give us 8X cubed? So that's negative 1X cubed. So then X times negative X squared would give us the negative X cubed. And then let's multiply negative X squared times three would be negative three X squared. So now we wanna find our like term with the X squared. So we have um, negative three X squared and this should give us negative 13 X squared. So we need to go down 10 more. So negative 10 X squared plus negative three X squared will get us there. And um, so then we would do 
x times negative 10x to get negative 10x squared. And then when we do negative 10x times 3, that's negative 30x. And now to get to um, negative 22x, we would need to go up 8x. So negative 30 plus 8x would get us there. And then it would be x times 8 would give us 8x. And then 8 times 3 would give us 24, which matches that. So we've divided those. Okay, now we're going to take that new polynomial, the purple one on the top, and we are going to divide in the x plus 2. So let's put x plus 2 over here. And then now we want to start with 3x cubed. And now we're trying to get this polynomial. Um, and so we would do x so x times 3x squared would give us this 3x cubed. So then 3x squared times 2 gives us 6x squared. And then what would our like term be for the x squareds to get us to negative x squared? So we're going to have to put negative 7x squared here. And then... Um, x times negative 7x would get us that negative 7x squared. And then negative 7x times 2 would give us negative 14x. Then we want to do the like terms with the x's. So negative 14x and what will give us negative 10x? So negative 14x up 4x. So then x times 4 will give us 4x, and then 4 times 2 will give us 8, which matches this, so we're good. So now what we've done is factored in x plus 3 and x plus 2, and we're left with this, poly this um, quadratic of 3x squared minus 7x plus 4 that we now have to factor. So now... Um, we can factor this one, and I'll just do that in the box as well. So when we factor this, then we put a circle in the middle here. And um, then we fill in kind of these squares on the edge here with this polynomial. So let me put that in blue. So we have this 3x squared minus 7x and a plus 4. So now we multiply um, these two numbers together, and that gives us 12x squared. And then we want to look for the whoops, for the factors of 12x squared that add up to negative 7x, that middle term. So we're going to want two negative numbers so that they multiply to a positive and add to a negative. So we'd want negative 4x and negative 3x. Those will multiply to positive 12 and add to negative 7. So then you can put these in the box. It doesn't matter where, but in these two corners. And now we'll take out a common factor. So we're going to take out what's in common between these two terms. So 3 and 4 don't have anything in common, but x squared and x have an x in common. And now we'll say this times x gives us 3x squared. So x times 3x will give us 3x squared. x times negative 4 will give us that negative 4x. And then 3x times negative 1 would give us negative 3x. So now we have our original factors that they told us, x plus 3 and x plus 2. And now we've factored this into 3x minus 4 and x minus 1. So that is the product of linear factors. So this is your answer as linear factors. Number 7, we know these things about the polynomial function. So we know it has um, degree 3. It has a leading coefficient that is negative. 
it has zeros at um, negative five, negative one, and three. So that's all of them since it gave us degree three and we have three zeros. And now it wants us to sketch a graph of this information. So let's plot these zeros. So we've got zeros at negative five, negative one, and three. So that's where it'll cross the x in the x axis. Then we know that it's a degree three, which is odd, and it has a leading coefficient that's negative. So we know the ends are going to be going in opposite directions. And since it's negative, it's going to start up on um, the left, and then it's going to be down on the right. So this one's going to start up or going to be up over here, and it's going to end up down over here. So then we just have to go through the zeros. It didn't tell us anything about um, where it crosses the y-axis. And so we'll just go down and about halfway between those zeros is where that minimum will be. And about halfway between these is where you'll come back down. But so something like that. I'll just get rid of this one. Um, but something similar to that.